and welcome to FAQ Friday, where we answer the most pressing questions of the week. I'm here with Saline County Health Department Director and Health Officer, Jason Tiller. Hi, Jason. Hi, Brenda. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Everyone, we're glad you're here. These are kind of interesting times, Jason. <laughs> These are some interesting times. And as part of those interesting times, we try to get information out to everybody as best we can. And this is a new tool for us to be able to try and do that. So I'm, I'm glad we're here. Yeah, well, we're glad on, this is the first Friday for our show for FAQ Friday, and we're just gonna jump right in. So Saline County is in phase two, and phase two includes senior citizens, high contact critical workers, those in congregate settings, and everyone left in phase one. Mm -hmm. How do we choose to vaccinate only senior citizens at this time? So within phase two, part of the decision making that was left to counties was to decide how to prioritize those subgroups within phase two. Um, in meeting with all of our planning partners for the vaccine campaign, which includes Salina Family and Salina Regional, uh, we looked at the information local as far as our data, um, and we decided that because those over 65 um, not only have a greater possibility of having medical conditions, um, but also because the data has showed that they have had a higher rate of hospitalizations, and that's where the majority of our deaths from COVID have occurred mm -hmm. is in those over 65. So they are also our most vulnerable population. Um, and given our limited doses, we felt that it was the best place to start with those over 65 um, to start with protecting them and then being able to work further into the additional groups. And are you able to say, thinking about our counties that are around Saline County, if they're doing something similar or Saline County is unique in the decision to start with senior citizens? Um, yes and no. So each county um, is not only addressing the, uh, how they're doing the vaccinations a little bit differently. Um, some of them have also decided to prioritize things differently. Some have started with those high contact critical workers. Some have started with um, the over 65 like we have. Um, some have just started with, if you fall into the phase two category, then we're going to vaccinate anybody that, that qualifies for that. Um, that creates 105 potential ways that <laughs> this is happening across uh -huh. the state of trying to vaccinate uh, people that are in that phase two category. That's what I was thinking. My brother's in Lyon County, my family's in Osborne County, and when you hear what's happening in other areas, it's good to have that base. This is why we're doing what we're doing in Saline County. So that's good to know. Right, and the other part of that too is also limits on how much vaccine is available. So uh, here in Saline County, we have approximately, or expecting approximately this week, 500 doses. We have some predictability that we may have 500 doses the next week and maybe the, you know, for the next couple of weeks after that. But as we've seen across the state and nationally, um, we can't put a lot of stock in for sure that we are going to have those beyond what we know we are getting in preparation to be able to potentially deliver next week to, to folks. So the same thing goes with other counties. Um, they are getting maybe lower doses um, they also have additional uh, hurdles that they may be having to deal with, geography, distribution, um, uh, how they are, are getting the vaccine out to people, whether they're using a walk-in or, or drive-through, or you know, what method that they're going to use in order to try and vaccinate their population. You mentioned partners, and my guess is you've been working on a lot of things over the years with those three partners. Would you name those three again? Right, so primary partners are Saline County Health Department, Salina Family Healthcare, and Salina Regional Healthcare. We have, especially during this pandemic, um, become very close <laughs> in our partnerships, um, you know, talking often throughout the week, uh, sharing information, um, coordinating what we are doing to try and not only reach the public for vaccinations and information, but for testing and case investigations and contact tracing and just all the different parts uh, that go into trying to deal with this pandemic right now. 
Well, we talked about doing the vaccination. How did Saline County and your partnerships decide to use the former J.C. Penney location that's in the Central Mall? So that's a great uh, question and, and really kind of fortuitous that it happened the way it did. Um, originally, we were thinking potentially about trying to do a drive through similar to the flu clinics that we have done in previous years. Due to some of the uh, logistical issues as well as the mandatory 15-minute monitoring to make sure that there are no um, uh, reactions or anything like that with the vaccine and the fact that it is extremely cold out and weather is unpredictable this time of year um, that it kind of led us away from doing potentially a drive-through right now and looking more at doing a uh, in-person where people would come in so, uh, a type of activity the challenge with that became uh, initially that our, our plans that we had pre-pandemic um, called for using a large facility to deliver a vaccine or medication in a short period of time to the majority of population with the assumption that we had all the materials to do that in a very short period of time. We don't have that right now. Nobody does. Um, we have a limited amount of vaccine. We know that this is going to stretch out over many, you know, many, many weeks in order to be able to accomplish this. Um, and so as we kind of were thinking about places and looking around, uh, Steve Owens from Central Mall reached out to mm -hmm. us and said, hey, we have a, a mall that's in Orlando that's doing this and using one of the storefronts to run a vaccine clinic. Is this something you might be interested in? Um, and I was over the moon about that one. Yes. So I went down there, we looked around um, and settled on that the JCPenney building itself uh, was going to be the space that would be able to meet our needs, would allow us to um, set up the flow as was necessary in order to be able to screen and give vaccinations and monitor people. Um, would also allow us that if a time comes when the uh, vaccine doses that we're expecting um, become much, much higher, you know, 1,000, 2,000, mm -hmm. whatever, that we can expect in a week, that we can have room to uh, scale up bigger for uh, more people to come through or to kind of be able to keep it smaller. Um, and one of the biggest uh, uh, selling points, if you will, was the fact that there um, was not an indication that we were going to have to try and pack all this up and move it anytime soon. Um, it has taken our partners and us a lot of time, effort, setup, testing, retesting of the layout um, to get everything like it is so far and to have to try and pack all that up, move it somewhere else, set it all up again um, would just be a huge uh, stress on all of the staff that's involved trying to do this. Well, help us kind of paint the picture. When you walk in to have this done for the vaccination at the former J.C. Penney's in the Central Mall, are you in the men's department? Are you in the children's department? Are you in the teen? Like, what, what can people expect when they walk in the double doors? Well, since all the signs are gone, I have no idea which department it is anymore. <laughs> oh. um, but the entrance is at the west door facing 9th Street. So when they first come in, um, there is a quick check to make sure that they have the paperwork uh, that's necessary. And if they don't have it, they can fill it out there. Um, from that point, they're given a group card. Um, and this is in order to basically help control the, the uh, flow of people and uh, help prevent them from having to stand in a line for a long period of time. So they will go sit down in the initial waiting area. They'll wait for their group letter to be called. And then they'll come up and their paperwork will be screened. At that time, they're also setting up their um, second appointment oh. four weeks from now, because remember, this is a two-dose vaccination. Um, so all of that's done before they leave. Then they go through one last screening of their medical screening of their paperwork to ensure that they don't have any uh, uh, reasons that they couldn't get the shot. Um, from that, they go over to a vaccination station, they get a shot, uh, they go around to a monitoring area uh, where they have to sit for 15 minutes just to make sure that there's no reaction. And then from there, they can check out and they go right out the uh, north doors, the old J.C. Penney into the mall and uh, can either go out the exit, you know, back out the parking lot or if they're so inclined, uh, go visit the mall while they're there as well.
Well, that's nice for people to have an idea of what to expect when they walk in. And yeah. then uh, for the dividers and all, not to have to reset up and move. Because um, I was thinking about why, why don't we use county property? Why aren't we using Kenwood Hall? Why aren't we using city property? Tony's Pizza Event Center. Yeah. Well, those folks have other things going on in the sit up and take down. Um, how are you deciding what day of the week to do the vaccinations? How, do, how does that come into play? So right now we had set up for Monday and Tuesday and that was based off the number of doses that we had. So we had 900 doses and we had a four hour or so block um, each day in order to try and give those doses. Um, for this next week, we've got approximately 500 doses that we're expecting. Um, we are looking at what day of the week will work best since really we can be able to do all of those in, in one day. Um, and then as time moves forward, what we're going to end up with is that in a given week, we're going to have an overlap where there may be two or three days where we're doing dose one, mm -hmm. and then uh, two or three days potentially where we're doing dose two on a group that got theirs 28 days prior. Oh, yes. And then as our vaccine allotments start uh, increasing, then we'll be able to increase more days um, uh, to be able to have people come in um, outside of the normal kind of eight to four time frame that we're working with right now. Oh, that, that flexibility of hours. Now, you've mentioned we several times. So right. you're Jason Tiller, <laughs> uh, we have here today with our health department. He's the director and the health officer for Saline County. When you say we, who are some other folks that are actually going to check in? Say, if I was going to get the vaccine, somebody was going to check me in, someone's going to guide me through the health screening, someone's going to give me the shot, someone's going to guide me to the waiting area. What kind of, what are kind of numbers are helping with this and who are the we that's making this happen? So the we right now, um, Solana family has taken point on operating and running the site. We're supplementing with some of our staff um, because most of our staff are involved in the case investigation and contact tracing of cases. Uh, Solana Regional is supplementing with some staff as well at different times. So the primary staffing is coming from Solana family. Um, and when I say we, because it is a community collaborative effort in order to be able to accomplish this, because there is no, no way that honestly any one agency could try and run all of this on their own for the length of time that we're expecting it to, to do it. So it is truly a team effort in order to uh, accomplish this. And so I don't think it would be appropriate for me to necessarily say I, <laughs> because it's not I that's making this happen. It is we, and it's, it's all of us from our, our agencies. Um, we've had a slew of volunteers that have reached out. Um, and when we get to a point to where we um, are able to do or have enough vaccine to do, um, like evening or weekend clinics, um, then we'll, we, we'll really be uh, uh, relying on a lot of those uh, volunteers at that time as well. Sounds like there's some good visionaries on this team also because what's happening today could be different tomorrow. Absolutely. And tomorrow could be different two days from then. So knowing um, what are some things you've learned along the way? Uh, well, that's a great question. So our pre pandemic plans and, and I mean us every county pretty much um, had the same template for a for a uh, mass vaccination or, or mass distribution program of medications. Anyway, they called for um, the assumption that we're gonna have all of our stuff. So in our plans originally, it was going to be something along the lines of using potentially like Tony's Pizza Event Center and that we were going to be staffing in order to try and either vaccinate or, or, or give medication um, in the instance of a biological attack mm. for 54, 55,000 people over two or three days. Um, one of the things that has significantly changed, of course, is that's not how this is working. <laughs> and so, you know, the long-term sustainability of being able to not only um, react to changes, uh, react to the new information of when vaccines are going to be provided, um, of being able to make changes on the fly at the clinic when something's not working right, um, and then also looking forward that if another pandemic should ever come around, which I hope that it doesn't during our lifetimes, but 
that all of the things that we will have learned, especially around this um, long-term sustainability of some sort of vaccine campaign, um, will have to be in those plans to ensure that in the next large-scale outbreak, that everybody that is already tired and exhausted, like our local healthcare workers are, who are also the ones trying to work and run these vaccine campaigns, um, are better prepared in the sense that we have a, a better understanding of everything that is going to happen for our healthcare workers and our community uh, leading up to the months to when a vaccine may be available. And then the um, process necessary to either look for new staff, have different processes um, in order to be able to do a long, long-term uh, vaccine campaign. I mean, there's a lot of little nuanced stuff in there. Continuous learning. Continuous <laughs> learning, that's oh my absolutely goodness. right. For all the different folks that are helping with this, there are a lot of different people that are helping in different backgrounds that make this happen, from staging, actually, in the, in the facility. Absolutely. When you think more facility maintenance, um, to the different levels of professionals, um, the volunteers. If somebody wants to help, how do they find out what screening, what paperwork, how do they find out if they want to help with the clinic? So if they want to help or volunteer with the clinic, they can reach out to us at the health department or they can reach out to Ann File at, at Solana Family. And we have started keeping a list of those people that have said, hey, when, when you have the need, we want to be able to volunteer, um, whether it's a nurse or it's um, just a general layperson. There are lots of different things that can be uh, uh, helped with, especially as this thing grows um, in size with more vaccine. Um, so that's how they can contact and be able to get involved. And when we think about Salina, Saline County and our small communities that are outside of the city limits of Salina, how can we help? What can residents of Saline County do to help this be successful? So I think one of the big things um, that we could really ask is, and I know that we've asked this before, um, but is to please, please understand and be patient. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very limited supply we're dealing with. Um, we are trying to get to people and get vaccinations in almost as, as quickly as, uh, or as feasible as possible when we're getting it. Um, but to understand that there is a lot happening yes. and to please be patient and to um, treat each other kindly when they're on the phone with us or other places when they are trying to, uh, when, they're, when they're frustrated, and I know that that's difficult. But. Yeah, when people have questions, people, me included, <laughs> want answers. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. That's how um, FAQ Friday came about, was questions coming in to the Saline County Health Department. And today on today's show, that's how we picked the top three questions to go over for FAQ Friday. So if you have questions, Saline County Health Department, um, you can contact them and, and knowing it may take a little bit to find out the answer. Yep. Um, also, there's the website, the Facebook page, some of those social media things are out there in addition to um, the phone line. Are yep. there any other resources that you'd like to direct people to? Um, we have our coronavirus page. Mm -hmm. Within our coronavirus page on the Saline County, Health, or the Saline County website, is also the sign up for our newsletters. Um, so not only our press release that goes out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, but we also have our Vax Vax newsletter that goes out on Tuesday and Thursday where we try to put some of the most up-to-date information we have for uh, vaccine in the county. Um, and they can go in there and they can sign up for those um, if they want to do that. And so that is a great resource. And then again, like you said, questions um, they can reach out to us, and if something's not coming through clear on, on one of those pro, uh, uh, newsletters or the information, then we want to try and make sure that we can correct that so that they understand what's going on. Very good. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, everyone, for joining us for FAQ Friday. Thank you.